so now that it is finally summer, I should have been trying to make as many of these videos as possible since the start. But I feel like I've just been so occupied and busy trying to do all the things that I said I would finally do and get around to after school ended. And now that I actually have the time and personal space for myself, I'm trying to do everything else at the same time. But this summer, I should be able to have a lot more free time when I'm not occupied to try to make these. Because, like I said, I say this in every single video, the number of artists and pieces and artworks that I want to talk about just keep piling up. It's like it's like the pile of books in my corner that keeps getting bigger because I keep buying new books and I just never end up reading them. So I need to stop putting these videos off because I have so many I want to make and I want to upload all of them. Today's artist that I really wanted to talk about today was actually someone I've been wanting to talk about for a while because I've always noticed her work just scattered around places like museums or like the SF MoMA that I would go to or just like random images of her work on digital formats like Instagram or Twitter or like Tumblr. Um, but I never really centered it down to be the same person until a couple months ago. And then that's when I realized that I should definitely make a video essay about this because I think her work is super interesting. So this named artist is Louis Bourgeois and she was a French American artist and I would say her career was very prolific and peaked around like the mid 19th century. Bourgeois is really known and famous for her works which have been displayed around the world as I guess one of the first to display psychologically charged and very personally intimate work. Also I'm definitely going to be struggling with pronouncing her name a lot because I don't know whether to pronounce it in like the English or like the French accent, bourgeois. So it's gonna be like a weird mishap of both. So ignore that. But I guess a lot of critics um, say that bourgeois is grouped into like abstract expressionist, um, which is true to a certain extent, but I think they only grouped her and her work in that because there weren't really any other titles to kind of um, classify her as, especially in the time period she started peaking because like I said, she was one of the first to actually really include her own personal intimate like trauma and psychological charge to it, like I said. Instead of really expressionist, I would definitely say her work is very abstract symbolist. I feel like that's a better word to phrase it. So Louis Bourgeois' life can kind of be seen as this constant demonstration of utilizing the creation of art as a tool for processing one's inner psychological and emotional landscape. She worked with a lot of different kinds of mediums and she started off with painting and I think a lot of printmaking but what she's most known for are these very like charged wide sculptures. She's really famous because her work deals with a lot of dissecting and exploring and kind of reacting to personal trauma and although it's pretty common especially nowadays in like modern contemporary art in her time she was definitely especially as a woman one of the first to ever actually incorporate these elements into her art she incorporates a very brooding and sexually explicit energy to her works energy to her pieces and she had a very specific presentation of her female viewpoint in regards to suppression and feminism and sensuality very like feminist themes in her work and she kind of like mixed that into a hosh pot of three-dimensional sculpture which was very rare especially for women during her time she has definitely been able to strongly impact installation art and conceptual art as a whole this ability to kind of emerge her own viewpoints and intermix it 
it with personal childhood trauma definitely gained her this international importance in subject matters such as conceptual and installation art. And she uses, like I said before, like a lot of symbolism with objects such as spirals or spiders or cages, sometimes even like medical tools. And she would use these objects in her work to symbolize the feminine psyche and the feminine beauty and I guess psychological pain. She has a lot of installation settings through the use of abstract form and a huge variety of media. She dealt with a lot of notions of universal balance and very sometimes playfully juxtaposes materials conventionally considered male or female. For example, she really liked to use very rough or hard materials that were most strongly associated with masculinity and used very soft biomorphic forms to kind of mold or be suggestive of femininity in her sculptures. So Louis Bourgeois was actually born in Paris in 1911 and was raised by two parents who owned a tapestry restoration business and she would help out a lot in the business by just drawing on the tapestries when they would depict like landscapes or scenes and I guess during this time and during the majority of her childhood her father actually carried out an affair with her tutor Sadie Gordon Richmond who was the English tutor who was living in their house at the time. This was a very deeply troubling and ultimately defining betrayal which remained a vivid memory for her and is actually expressed in a very large number of her works. Bourgeois later moved on to be a very extensively educated woman. In the early 1930s, she actually studied math and philosophy at the Sorbonne University. I guess after the death of her mother in 1932, she decided to move on from math and actually decided to study art at several schools. Her career started off in 1938 when she started to exhibit her work at the Salon de Tonome and actually opened her own gallery in a sectioned off area of her father's tapestry showroom. Through this kind of stint she had with her father's tapestry business, she actually met her husband, art historian Robert Goldwater, who she later moved on to start a family and have three sons with in New York. So this is a piece that I really wanted to talk about because it is one she made in the early 1940s and this is after, you know, she moved to New York and she's starting to raise her sons and her children and it is actually titled Femme Maison and in English I believe this translates to woman, like housewoman. So at this point in her life as a newly made mother, she was probably certainly thinking of how she felt trying to be an artist and balancing being a mother at the same time. In this piece, she kind of uses architectural imagery to seem like the woman is suffocating. And in a way, it's kind of really dire and a little bit scary. But on the other hand, if you are an optimist, you see the glass half full, you can see that the woman is standing in a very upright manner with, I guess you could say, a kind of certain dignity. And I guess some people consider it a self-portrait of herself. The woman in the piece is actually Louis Bourgeois herself because the hair that comes out of the house is actually a signifier of the same color of bourgeois actual hair. Architecture was a motif she used very strongly throughout her career to symbolize her feelings and I guess she said in an interview once that she saw architectural structures as a place of refuge for her. I guess these are themes that she really struggled with a lot as do all women. So I guess it was very resonant with the female art consumer demographic at the time. However, by the 50s and early 60s, there are gaps in her production as she takes the choice to become very immersed in psychoanalysis. In 1964, finally, after a very long break, Bourgeois presented very strange 
organically shaped plaster sculptures, and in this new 1960s era, her work retained its very surrealist undertones, but she kind of decided to expand in size and executed the sculptures in more, very stronger, more durable materials, such as bronze, carved stone, and interestingly, rubber latex. So this piece I'm talking about now, Eyes, is a very large marble sculpture that kind of shows the persistence of the surrealism aspect in her late 60s work. So the eye was already a very recurring motif in the art world, in surrealism at the time, and bourgeois kind of serves it as both a symbol for the act of perception and as an allusion to female sexual anatomy. You can see in the piece that perched on top of a very massive marble block chiseled in various places to resemble a house. And like I said, again, houses like Femme Maison are a very recurring motif in her work. On the piece, there are two highly polished round balls with a kind of carved circular opening at each center. And as a unit, they kind of suggest a very bold abstract head, a female torso, or the symbolic marriage of a woman to home and family. So as you can see in these two pieces I've shown you, she has a very resonant kind of desire to return to themes of maternity and being a woman and kind of this idea of how a woman should stand in this time period and as her role as a female artist. Now compared to the other ones I've shown you, this one is a little bit more scary, especially the title. And this one is actually titled The Destruction of the Father. Like, wow, that is a lot of weight and a lot of personal trauma she is incorporating into this work. And I guess it's kind of this visual manifestation of this revenge fantasy that she aims at her own father, who according to the artist was very known to gloat and brag and be very highly narcissistic of himself. Relying on her soft forms of landscape series and very often explicit body imagery, her work in this piece reflects a scene at a life-sized dining table placed inside an intimate interior which some people argue that is very um like reminiscent of a cave or a womb i'm not gonna lie i can't really see the womb aspect of it but i mean it's very interpretive very subjective the table is covered with these flesh colored anthropomorphic forms that almost appear like dismantled body parts as well as actual joints of a lamb. And of course, all of these underscore this implied heavy violence. She purposely chooses to bathe the entirety of the scene in a very soft yet very glaring red light that symbolizes anger, death, blood, and kind of invites the viewer in almost a disturbing way to witness the aftermath of the killing. Her own description of this very disturbing and gory scene is she kind of reflects that quote the children grabbed him and put him on the table and he became the food. They took him apart, dismembered him, ate him up and so he was liquidated the same way he liquidated his children. The sculpture represents both a table and a bed, end quote. This was her first major piece that very openly and literally dealt with her lifelong discomfort and trauma stemming from her father's constant infidelities and a theme that would provide underlying motivation for much of her other work. It was also one of the first major installation art pieces like ever because this was when installation art was still kind of in its infancy and it was very new to the museum and art world. So I guess her ability to do this was very courageous of her like kind of stemming out and branching this whole new subject of field and it was being explored by a lot of her other artist friends as well, such as Judy Chicago, who is also a very interesting installist artist. After this really gory kind of shift, shifted 60s series, she kind of took a break from her artwork and 
didn't really get any light shed on it too much until 1982 at 70 years old bourgeois finally took the center stage again she seized it back up with this retrospective at the museum of modern art this kind of final stage of her life and also of her career she chose to create these monumental spiders and i would say this is what she is most known for her and what is most seen on social media or is still being displayed today in galleries are these eerie room-sized spider sculptures. And she actually calls them cells, and they're kind of like these very evocative figures, often hanging from wires, and is used from a range of fabric works fashioned from actually her own used personal clothes. In 1947, when she actually was starting her art education and career out like in its very beginning she drew these two very small ink and charcoal drawings of a spider and 50 years later in the 1990s she creates this series of steel and bronze spider sculptures it's very ironic and contrasting to see this i would say because it is very rare for artists if you actually study them like through their eras to see them kind of go back to their original beginning stage of their career. Because usually you see an artist's era as progression. Like, oh, they progress to this. Oh, they progress to this new form of art and exploring themselves. But Bourgeois kind of returns back to this symbolism and motif that I guess she felt really drawn towards during the beginning of her art career. Her most famous spider sculpture was actually called Mama, and it is over 30 feet high and is probably Bourgeois' most ambitious and beloved sculpture. She implicitly says the driving motif and implicit representation is of her mother, and in her own words she says, quote, the spider is an ode to my mother. She was my best friend. Like a spider, my mother was a weaver. Like spiders, my mother was very clever. Spiders are friendly presences that eat mosquitoes. We know that mosquitoes spread diseases and are therefore unwanted. So spiders are very helpful and protective, just like my mother. End quote. In this work, the spider, if you actually see it in real life, is larger than life. Like literally larger than life and is seen to be carrying a sack containing 17 gray and white marble eggs. This huge massive piece can actually only be installed outdoors and is able to evoke this sense of awe and fear, but rather than this gory like violent fear I would say that she kind of represented in her works about her father and her traumatic revenge, this one I would say evokes fear but kind of denotes it in like a very present vulnerability, if that makes sense. Like compared to like the gory like trauma themes of the ones relating to her father, this one is more of fear as in awe and respect that she had for her mother. The spinning and weaving of the spider's web links in the piece Mamon also I guess, are a reference to Bourgeois' own mother who, like I said, worked in the tapestry business. A decade or so after these huge spider sculptures were released, Bourgeois died peacefully in New York in 2010 at the age of 98. Her work is known and always centered upon the reconstruction of memory, and in her 98 years, she was able to produce this astounding body of sculptures and drawings and prints and installations and served as a very leading icon in the feminist art movement. She was able to inform the budding Bourgeoisie feminist art movement and continues to influence feminist inspired work today. Like Georgia O'Keeffe was actually inspired by her work. Like I said in the beginning, although a lot of critics like to kind of cage her and classify as the like female abstract expressionist of her time and is mostly known to be in common with surrealism and feminist art. 
She's not really formally affiliated with a very specific artistic movement, I would say. Although it technically isn't a real, like, form or classification of a subject of art, I would like to describe her work and others as well as very confessional. And through this kind of confessional art, she was able to encourage a very intimate analysis of her own and subjects and confidential and controversial experiences and emotions. Was actually able to inform male artists as well through her kind of feminist, liberating form of art. Her astounding ability to weave her own personal experiences and various mediums of art is allows us to give her credit for opening up these entirely new ways to consider the body, um, the feminine psyche, its relations, and its own unique identity in relation to the artist itself. So I guess that is finally my conclusion to my Louis Bourgeois video. Something, like I said, I've always seen her work around and I knew I had to make a video essay on her. So if you were able to make it to the end of this video and not click off, I am so appreciative of you. And it is so heartwarming to know that there are actual people I am so appreciative of all the sweet comments I receive on my videos. I don't know where you guys are from, like whether you saw my TikToks or you're just from the vast void of YouTube. Either way, I am so appreciative that you guys actually enjoy my videos. Like that is so astounding to me. And also I am very appreciative of the people in my actual life who also give me commentary and feedback back on my videos so i'm so appreciative of everyone who watches my videos and like i said again i'm going to try to make as many as i can this summer so thank you so much for watching and watch for my next video